Carry on. Nope, probably not on the bottom. Oh. See, I turned it back off. You turned it back off. Yeah. And now we're on. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so wonderful to see everyone's bright, shiny faces here. As we move the microphone. And it's so wonderful to see everyone's bright, shiny faces on Zoom. I personally can't see you on Zoom, but Neil can, and it's good to see you there, regardless if I can see you or not. And welcome! Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Welcome, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey, where we are an open and affirming science of mind community, where the vibration of love lifts you, the wisdom of the ages inspires you, and the science of mind teaching empowers you. We believe that heaven and hell are states of consciousness that you experience in this lifetime, and that you are the architect of your life, and that it is never too late to know true happiness. Some people would want to thank. First of all, I want to thank Ty and Dwyer and Amanda for getting us pumped up on a great morning. Very, very exciting. I'd like to thank Patricia for our SOME Sunday. Uh, talk this morning, and I want to thank all of you for being here. All right, and let's see. Well, I, I said the band. I said the choir and the band. Selena and Richard, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. So, boys, 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 speak, come on. <laughs> speaking of Selena and Richard and everyone else, it's kind Don't of make me come in there. <laughs> We'll turn it back over to them for our opening chant. Sorry. All good. So it's all we need, friends, to take a deep breath as we got your spirit lifted. You want to settle in.
moment this time. The more we let ourselves, the less we project our pain onto the world. The more we let ourselves, the less we project our pain onto the world. That's why our Lord is a new day. So take that into a little bit of silent meditation and realize the love that you are. Everything I see is sacred. Everything I see is sacred. Everything I hear is sacred. Everything I hear is sacred. Everything I say is sacred. Everything I say is sacred. Everything I feel is sacred. Everything I feel is sacred. All of life is sacred. All of life is sacred. Now let's do that together again. Every
And it is time now for our December affirmation, which Neil has posted in the chat, and which Neil has posted in your orders of service, <laughs> or someone has at least. In the Sunday program. In the Sunday program. Read along with me, if you would. I stand naked in the light of love and wisdom as I allow the winds of change to surround me and the purity of I am is revealed. I celebrate being in and of the one because it is my breath and the beating of my heart. And all this activity is love simply having its way with me and so it is. Michelle, are we doing anything before our song, before the talk? Nope. No. So we'll turn it right back to Ty, the band, and the choir. Thank you. That's where I heard it this time, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
most glorious day of my life. Today is the most glorious day of my life. And I am the place where love resides. And I am the place where love resides. Yes, so I've never done something else. Some of you who used to be in my classes a long time ago when my son Seth was a little, um, a little tot, at the end of every class every year, he would call and we'd all shout out, good night Seth. But now I have a new person that I, whose name I have to call because she wanted to be here so badly, but she was doing something else. And that's my granddaughter, Lila. So hey, Lila, just say that. But I want to give you each, shout out the name of somebody that you wish was in the room with you. Just shout it out. Right. Well, Long glass. Hey. Yeah, here you go. So now they're in the room because our connection is not just physical. So last week I invited you to take on a practice for the month of December of calling things good, of declaring that when something happened it was in your favor, on your behalf, whatever language you want to use. Now I don't know if you practiced it. Did any of you remember a practice? A couple of hands. Did you feel a shift in the way you perceive things? Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting a nod of head, which is great. So, good, that's good. Metaphysicians have certain qualities. If I were, uh, who was the name of the woman who wrote Frankenstein, Shelley? Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley, thank you. And whoever that doctor was, that I mean, it was Dr. Frankenstein who created the monster, of course, right? So if I were to put together all the best parts of a metaphysician, these are the parts, and we're gonna talk about that today, I really didn't mean to talk about Frankenstein, but you know what I mean. Put the parts together of a truly powerful metaphysician. And so one of the qualities, and this is, I'm going to start with one of the hardest ones, and I've spoken to you about this before, but one of the most difficult ones for many of us, me included, is being able to see something that looks uncomfortable or painful without giving it power. That's a very complicated metaphysical practice, and yet it's one of the highest practices for us to develop. And, and, I, and I'll give you a reason why. Um, as you know, right, I just finished writing another book and I submitted it, thank you God, it's over. That was very, a little bit on the stressful side, I have to admit. And what happened was when I started out that project, I had 13,000 words of a document that I used to use in teaching that course. And uh, Reverend Joel, who is the publisher, said, we need no less than 50. 50,000 words. 50,000 words. And I was like, oh my God, how am I ever going to do that? And for weeks I'm writing, thinking, oh my God, and I'm watching the word count. Now he doesn't care about the word count if the content is there, but it's, it's a goal. I, I'll have you know I finished it somewhere about 56,000 words. But the point is, he pulled that out of me. When I see your wholeness, I pull that out of you. When I see you as perfect, I help to pull that out of you. Are you getting that? That's why we practice that. Because as we see each other, which was the lesson again last week, as we see each other, that which we're seeing with is how we interact and how we call each other up to a higher experience of life. Yes? Yes. Okay. Not an easy thing when someone's annoying the bejesus out of you. And I get that. So the practices, then we turn to other practices to help support us in seeing the perfection. So um, I read a fact last night that scientists have proven that when you want to change, you know, and I've been talking a little bit more about neuroscience and the, and the brain and rewiring the brain, that if you want to rewire something, it might take as many as 400 repetitions to change something. Unless it's done in the form of play and fun. In the form of play and fun, you can rewire the brain in as little as 10 to 40 repetitions. This it's fun. Yes. Yes. This is what we do. That when you're enjoying yourself, you take in the truth and the changes into a place that doesn't have to be so intellectual. 
but you take it in. I was really relieved about that, because sometimes thinking about 400 repetitions could be quite, uh, you know, quite daunting. So, this is what we do here. Whether we realize it or not, we develop the ability to look past the illusion of struggle, and then to cultivate that as a skill set. The secret of living a powerful metaphysical life is, is in the detail. It's in the detail. It's not in grand gestures. It's not that you go away and you study with some guru for a month at a time. That's great. But it's in the detail. Because then you have to come home. And it's what do you do when you're home? How do you treat your loved ones? How do you treat your children, your grandchildren? How do you treat yourself? How do you treat yourself? Are you practicing self-care? Are you remembering not to judge yourself? Are you remembering to look in the mirror and say, man, you look good. <laughs> And of course, since Donald's here, to remember that we are the bomb digging Amen. Right? Yes. So, it is not about, a, um, and, it, and it's certainly not about how much money do you donate. I, I don't mean to make, I don't, this is going to sound a little disrespectful, but more it's about me just not understanding the culture. I'll, 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 I'll cope to my ignorance for this, okay? So hopefully give me a little bit of license. Because I see churches mostly Catholic churches, and they have so much money that they keep putting up statues. And I don't really understand that, I have to be honest. I'd rather see that money go to a program. I would. I'd rather see it go somewhere else than to put up, I don't know, an edifice that, that's, I mean, it's beautiful, it's grand and glorious, but I'd really rather see that money go to where to feeding somebody or helping the, the, the unhoused, as they, they now say. Don't understand that either, but I'll leave that one alone. So the path to heaven, which is where we go when we do the work, is paved on certain simple paving stones. Each stone brings us one step closer to a life worth living. And if we had to um, bring this teaching down to one point, one focus, it would be this. It is done unto you, it is done to you as you believe. It is done unto you as you believe. So I know you're wondering, we have this textbook, it's like 500 you know, pages, we have all these other books, we have all these other practices, and basically it's coming down to a quote by Jesus. But that's because we're, we tend to be a little cynical sometimes. And our cynicism can often distance us from the value of certain wisdom. You know, we might judge it or, or we dismiss it. But the fact is, it, it goes back to the things we spoke about again last week, embodiment. Embodiment. So here are some of the paving stones for being a powerful and empower, I don't mean power over. I never mean power over. But powerful to create change. When I think of powerful, I think of us being connected to source. That's how I see powerful. So some of these paving stones for our enlightenment, they're going to be so simple, is when we practice being instead of doing. Sometimes we get a little caught up and think I have to do more to get more. I have to do more to be more spiritual. We just have to be. You have to be allowing, not forcing. Allowing is this beautiful en um, energy of flow and ease and, you know, just this race, this rhythmic kind of okayness. But forcing clearly gets in our way. Receiving, not getting. I can go to get something or I can step back and allow myself to receive. And I can receive love, I can receive finances, I can receive all sorts of things. But if we change our energy from getting to receiving, we've now placed ourselves once again in a more beautiful and powerful position. That we, we would accept life with grace and ease. 
accepting life with grace and ease, which goes back to saying the universe is working for me on my behalf. And so, <coughs> excuse me, um, and sometimes with that, with accepting life, sometimes when we think we're in charge of our life and we're in charge of our schedule, we're in charge, and all of a sudden life says, ha, oh yeah. So yesterday I had a house full of company that I didn't expect all day. That's what happened. I had people show up and they didn't leave, <laughs> which was kind of lovely. And then at the end of the night, when some of them left, then my granddaughter came in with her, with this part I expected, to have to make brownies for them. It's a long story. But the point is, sometimes you think life is going to be one way, and it's not. So either I could bitch, moan, complain, and force my way into being a certain way or having that happen, or I could say, okay, this is what's happening now. And that energy is soft. That energy is gentle. We love, those of us who are in practice, we love without expectations or conditions. And I have to tell you, I'm learning more and more and more about that. Some of these things I've known for decades and some of these things I've even spoken about, but I believe now that there's a timing to when we allow these lessons to find us. And acceptance of someone as they are, whether you like it or not, see that's the key. Whether you accept it or not, but accepting the way they are provides freedom for you like nothing else can. We practice compassion even before we have understanding. We practice compassion before understanding. Because if you have to wait to understand someone's challenge, to have compassion for them, you put a condition on your compassion. I know I've said that before, but these are just kind of important things. And this is one of the paving stones that bring us from who we are to the space of freedom and enlightenment. And the, the last one I have down here is that we practice curiosity over fault finding and blaming. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yet, it's a critical stone, it's a critical step on the path to where you want to be. And we humans, we're kind of used to struggle. I think many of us, not all of us, not everybody in this room, but many of us are conditioned to thinking life is hard. And it has an aspect of that. So to be able to move past that takes us walking this path so we can stop buying into that struggle and that limitation. And if we want to get to heaven, and for us, heaven is a state of higher consciousness, we want to get to heaven, we have to be in practice. When you're home, when you're alone, when you're with your children, when you're with your boss, when you're with the kids that annoy you because you're teaching them in school. <laughs> it is what you do in the moment that makes you a, fine, a refined practicing metaphysician or not. Understand? Yes. Okay. And so, um, for me, one of the things that I do to support my, my elevation is it doesn't have quite the reward that some people think it should. I am a legitimate tither. I give 10% of my income gross, off the top. I don't wait. Why do I do that? And I'll tell you right off, I don't do it to get, because if I did, that would have been blown a long time ago. <laughs> Just didn't work out that way. But the fact is, when we do it in the spiritual nature of which it's meant, what, I, what is guaranteed me is an expansion of consciousness. And I'm reaping those benefits. An expansion of self-love. And I am reaping those benefits. An expansion of believing in the law that creates the world as I would like to see it. And that comes because I invest in the law through this center first. I give it first before I do anything else. 
It doesn't make me rich. It makes me stranded. And that's what I want. And, it's, and, and, and I have some pride about that. Not an ego-based pride. Not one that says, oh, look at me, look what I'm doing. Because obviously if it was like that, we might be somewhere else. If I had had enough that made that big of a difference, it might have been, you know, it would look differently. But what the pride that I have is that I am so madly in love with the possibility of the center and this teaching that I give to that. I give to that. We have to deal with self-doubt. Because all of a sudden you're walking this path, you're walking along these paving stones toward freedom and enlightenment, and something will come. Spirit will spirit will not be te- will not test you, but you will be tested. Because spirit loves you the way you are. But your faith and conviction will be tested because it's a matter of strengthening it. And so there will some. <laughs> You know, you'll be saying, yes, I'm going to now love everybody, no matter what. And along comes that neighbor with the challenge. Along comes that friend who didn't keep their word. (laughs) The discussion we had earlier. Along comes the, you know, the the ex who says they want more money. Whatever that is. So that is the moment. That's That's when the rubber meets the road. Can you, in that moment, can you, in the moment of a challenge or self-doubt or fear, can you step forward anyway? These practices are not big, but they're definite. So today we celebrate the sacred power that lives within each of us. Life as a metaphysician as a spiritual metaphysician, is about practices. Now, you might not be the one who wants to create an altar, a meditation space, which is always recommended. Excuse me. You might not want to be that person. That's okay. You might just want to be the spiritual being who, in their practice, in their living, in their conversation, brings the oldness of spirit to the conversation. That when you engage someone, <laughs> when my granddaughter came over with last night with her friend, I, I was so aware that she's in a house that's different than the homes that she's normally in. So my job as a spiritual metaphysician that's seeking to model was to be that presence for her as much as I am for my granddaughter. Because you know, as grandmother, you tend to you know, favor, right? You, you know that. It's, it's, just, it's just built in. So I thought to myself, and I was very conscious of it because we're making the brownies, and, you know, who's putting what in. So I, I made sure that the same part of me that I give to Lila, was, I was giving to this young girl. So that when they come in my home, they can depend that my home is a safe place. There's nothing, <laughs> last night, <coughs> excuse me, last night I had another task before the brownies, because it was a busy day, and I was on an, um, uh, I was interviewed for, a no- I'm not, I've been, I nominated myself, to, I'm running for leadership for the Centers for Spiritual Living again, as you all know, I did that a number of years ago. And um, I've done it again, and so I was preparing for the interview, and I was reading the ODM, which is the uh, operation design model that governs the organization that you are all part of, whether you realize that or not. And in it, there was this line that said that we will be known for the love that we are. And I was taken aback because for all that I know about behind the scenes things, I don't feel like we're doing that. I don't want to hear but I want to talk about here in a second. But as the organization, I know too much to believe that we are actually activating that. But imagine, let's imagine right now that you are that, that people know the teaching because of the presence, the amount of love that you bring into every room, every relationship, every conversation. 
Imagine how powerful we could be if you standing as one person representing this whole out of love. Can you, can you get a sense of that when I'm saying that? What a beautiful, beautiful thing that would be. This is always my invitation to us. My invitation is that you represent the whole as the full potential that you can be. Is that something that you might be willing to do? I'm looking around for you, bobbing heads or not. Uh, not everybody's bobbing their heads. Okay, I get it. It might be too much to ask. But consider it. Consider it. Because this teaching, <laughs> and Ernest Holmes said it, this teaching was the has the potential of being the next great religion. And we don't even need another religion. Let's take that out of it. Let's say it's the next great working teaching that will transform lives. That's what it is. It is the next great teaching that will transform lives. And you are part of that. And wherever you go, whatever you do, in your work or in your home, you are part of that. And that is all done to you you believe. Let's take this into prayer. And if you will, I'm going to invite you to stand if you want to and hold a hand, hold someone's hand. Oh, for me, standing represents standing for an idea, standing steeped in an idea. Even with those of you at home on Zoom, I even invite you to stand. I know you're alone in your room, but that's okay because it just it, that this posture has a, a thing of commitment. Let's get married to each other by being in the commitment together. And let us allow the glorious essence of good that is rightly ours. Let us allow it, accept it, and allow it in our lives. Let us be willing to receive our good and our greater good. Let us be willing to activate that good by showing up and being the totality of who we are. Let us remember that we each are worthy because we are enough. We are enough. We are lovable, we are valuable, and we are worthy of the good that is waiting for us right where we stand. And with our receptivity and open arms and open heart, we activate it, we accept it, we allow it, and it becomes our reality. So as I speak this word for each individual here and each individual listening, I declare that we, as a collective, <coughs> are a powerful, or are, are, are a power for change, for transformation, for freedom, and for liberation. And if you're willing to accept that charge, shout a yes into the room. Yes. yes! Yes. And with a bounty of love and conviction and faith, I release this word to love, to law, and to the awe of life that surrounds us. And so it is. And Thank so you. it is. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to say one more thing so I don't have to get up again later while I have the mic. A couple, uh, last week, I invited you to participate in a science of mine, Back to Basics. We still only have a few reservations. I want to see everybody in this room on that class. It's only six weeks. It's, a, it's available during the day. It's available at night. It's available in my home, or it's available on Zoom. But I'm asking you to be in practice with each other. So we could be in home. You make it funny and then inviting people into the house. No, no. She says you sound like Dr. Seuss. Oh. <laughs> I sound like, okay. It's available in a box. It's available, available in a box. box. It's available on Zoom. <laughs> no, that's true. The Zoom in room. Okay. That's cute. <laughs> because if we study together, we will be moved together. We will be more empowered. Some of you have never taken a class. Take a class. Some of you have taken it. Ten times. Take it again. I've made it so available to you that there should be no reason why not unless you just hate the entire idea. Trust me, it will be fun. It will be fun. 
it's a joke. It starts on the 11th, and it's daytime, 10 to 11.30, and evening, 7 to 8.30. I love you all. Thank you. Please read along with me. I bless this gift that I give today. 
I give this gift from my heart, and I give it mindfully. May my gift go further to heal, prosper, and bless this center and all who enter. I accept all good that comes as a result of this flow, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And we have many ways in which you can give. Neil is posting that into the Zoom if he hasn't already, and you can see him if you have any questions. And we have some announcements. Next Sunday, which is December 10th, we will be in person, as well as the, yes, 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 a reason to celebrate, as well as the following Sunday, the 17th, and <laughs> New Year's Eve, December 31st. We'll, we'll be here. What a great way to be here. And, as Ty just whispered, that December 31st, we will be holding the Sacred Taze service that is very special. We've never been a part of it. Please come along. With the and release be a part. ceremony. The release ceremony as well. Mmm, looking forward to that. And we have a very, very special thank you that we would like to give, and that is to Giovanna Camu for sponsoring today's celebration. <laughs> And for these and other announcements, you can check the website for Sunday information at cslnj.org slash Sunday hyphen service. <laughs> check the website, newsletters for information, check your emails, all of this stuff comes out twice a week at least, or is it three times now? Twice, no, twice. Twice. So twice. The first time's for members. First time's for members. Gotcha, gotcha. And as Reverend Michelle has said, she is continuing the Back to SOM Principles, that starts on the 11th, 11th, that's Monday, in a box or in a box, come along and join us. And so Yes, you, you, you read my mind, or you, or you read the announcements. <laughs> Thursday, December 21st, the Sacred Unfolding, a solstice celebration, that's 7.30 p.m., Right here at B'nai Keshet, there will be a drumming. Thank you. I love the djembe, my <laughs> Always love your djembe. <laughs> Choir will be there. Yeah. Singing along. And the beat of the drums echoes in the air, stirring the magic within us. Re registration is required, so please see the details for registration. For Bring a friend. Yes. Bring, Bring two. Bring twelve. Exactly. And the ongoing program, She Speaks Women's Gathering, hosted by Nitty Bonner. That is a monthly gathering, and that's uh, the two, third Tuesdays of the month. So feel free to join in on that. It is ongoing, so there's, there's no end date at the moment. So if you feel compelled to be a part of that, please do so. And uh, I think that leads us right back to our closing song. And Ty, band, choir. I want to say thank you to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>